Okay guys, part two of our video. We are almost done. Uh, as you can see, I went ahead and put all of the racks in here. Uh, and I'll show you what all those do, but I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is your upper rack right here, which I thought is really cool. It comes with a little half rack, which honestly, I don't know that I'm gonna use that much. Um, I, I, honestly, I'm not really sure what that's for. Uh, I know that it fits in there in a manner that um, you can take the upper grate out and just use half. Um, but like I said, I, I usually cook a lot of meat at one time, so. I don't think I'm gonna need that. What's cool that I just discovered is this is the main grate and you can see where I put my drip pan. It actually goes on the lower grate and these flip up. So in case you have to service that, like, you know, let, let's say that you fill this full of water and you do you wanna do a water smoke in here. Well, you know, halfway through your smoke, your water pan could dry up so you can lift this up to service that, okay? If that's not cool enough, you can also, and these are heavy, which means it's good quality. So here's your drip pan. And the only other thing that you haven't seen you do yet is your lower grate, okay? So here's your lower grate. And let's say you have to get in here to add more charcoal halfway through the cook, check it out. Isn't that cool? So you just take your briquettes and kind of feed them in there by hand and you're good there. So this is how this goes together. The lower grate here. Um, you don't cook anything on this other than like if you're gonna grill, you're gonna grill some steaks or something like that. Man, perfect grate to do that. It just looks like the cleanup would be pretty intense. Um, you know, but that's gonna be for searing is what that's for. Smoking, your drip pan goes in. And like I said, you can fill this full of water and do a water smoke. I'm definitely gonna try that. This is that little funky half grate that I was telling you about. And it just fits in there like so. Maybe if you were just going to cook on half of it. Right. And you've already got half the charcoal just for that side. Right, yeah. And, I mean, it'll work on, it looks like it works on either side to me. I don't want to swear it. No, actually, well, you know, actually, I think it's good. you can flip it like that, but you don't really want to grill on that side. So, no, it's just for, just for the left side. Or you could just turn it like this. Well, you can't because... See how one side of the grill is round and the other side is flat? Oh, so okay. these, these grates only go in there one way. So then you put on your main grate over all that. Then see, this is what I was saying. Everything fits into its beveled edges. And that's what's so cool about this grill. One thing I wanted to show you before I forgot. If you guys are thinking, well, how do you get a temperature thermometer in there? Right here. See this little screw? You just unscrew that. Your temperature probe goes in that hole. Comes out here. Right there. And then you can stick your meat and set your kitchen thermometer, your uh, your cooking thermometer right here and voila. And when you're done with it, that's a little heat plug. You can, you know, in case you're... Me, I'm going to try uh, my meter. Which, if you guys have seen my other videos, you've seen me use that. And hopefully, the signal that that meter puts off is good enough to make it through all this ceramic. I don't know. We're going to find out. So, for storage reasons, this bad boy is going back in here for now. And if you're going to store it in here, I discovered you can put it over this little latch. Just slide it in there. And then your main grate here, which is a really cool option, just pops up on top. That's why it's called the the 32 inch big bad <laughs> is because look at this surface area, uh, you know, 32 inch. I don't know how many cubic inches of cooking area you have, but I mean, you're talking, you know, one, two, three, four slabs, four or five slabs of ribs and another five or six slabs of ribs over here on the bottom. I mean, that's a lot. So if you're gonna entertain, I would almost uh, venture to say, this is almost commercial grade, in my opinion. So, I'm gonna keep on putting Word it together. The wise, when you're putting anything you screw into this grill, remember it is ceramic and you don't wanna over tighten it. Um, in fact, I would almost just recommend finger tight because remember, ceramic cracks really, really easy. So, see, that's still pretty stable, but you get in here and start really cranking down on things. It's, 
going to end up badly. Say, so are you watching? <laughs> uh, there's Gracie. Like I said, none of these videos have really been too awfully informative. So that's my goal here today is to um, get you guys educated on how to put one of these together if you buy one. So these extra tabletops are, these are additional. Um, if you order one of these grills, you have to ask for them. Uh, it's, a, it's an additional accessory. They don't come with the grill. Um, I just got it because I thought it would make the grill look a little bit neater. So that's why I opted for them. And honestly, I don't remember what they cost, but I, you, you'll get hit with a ton of options as far as accessories. Um, and that's one, one piece of advice I will offer to you guys is when you order one of these grills, order everything that you foresee yourself needing right then. Um, this grill even comes with a fan. Uh, you can also install a fan on it. Um, but like I said, you need to order it right then because if you have the mentality of I'll go ahead and get the grill and eh, I may order it on down the line we all know that typically doesn't happen we usually just forget about it and but some of us will keep that in the back of our head and order that fan a year down the line and it may not be available or something like that so um, you do need to probably order everything you foresee yourself wanting for this grill up front so I'm gonna pop this bad boy on here. <laughs> All right, so live and learn. You can actually just put this little bracket piece on there and then slide your tabletop on top of it. So durr. So when you're putting, like I said, just remember this is ceramic, so you don't wanna just power tighten it. Just give it a, a snug twist. But if you've ever, the only reason I know to do this is because I, I don't do plumbing, I do heating and air, but I have installed toilets before. If you put them on the base, if you over tighten that nut on the bottom, just a hair too tight, it'll snap the base of the toilet. You have to throw it away and go get a new one. So anyways, that's cool. Now we know that these actually remove and you can store them. So that's really cool. Okay, guys, listen, this bad boy's done. Um, thank you for joining us today. I'm going to go over just a quick thing, a few things uh, to kind of let you know uh, how this grill works. It's got two different settings on this lid. So when you shut it, uh, it most of the time, it will go ahead and seat itself. See? So that's one setting right there. Um, and then you can actually lock it. Okay? And what's really cool is every it's so airtight every time... You press down and seal it. You can actually hear air coming out of here. Um, they tell you when you're using these to pop them open and burp them so that you don't just flood it with oxygen and get a big flare up in it. But anyways, you adjust your heat two ways through your chimney cap right here. Okay. And then your second step is over here. And they say that it does take a little bit of practice to figure out what temperature does what but in order to these are your intakes your oxygen intakes so see you can open it all the way they have bigger holes on down to small depending on what temperature you're trying to achieve so i imagine for 225 250 you're probably going to be somewhere around there if i were to guess but it's just going to take trial and error and that's what's good about the burn-in so now what we're going to do is uh, we are going to get this grill burn in. Um, I'm gonna have to read the instructions to find out how long they re recommend you burning these in. But as you all know, that's real important on a new grill. And we will uh, get it burnt in, seasoned, and then we're gonna do our first cook. Really, really looking forward to that. Hopefully the weather stays nice and we can do that here pretty quick in the next couple days. You guys have any recommendations on what you wanna see me cook on this? Let me know. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this. As, as usual, please like us, subscribe us, uh, subscribe to us. 
Leave us any comments you want to, and we will see you next time, guys.